Uh, welcome to the Sports and Play Group. I'm Miranda Maupin uh, with SKIA Solutions, and we also have Lauren Johnson from SKIA who's going to take notes for our group. And I also believe have Christina Fitzgerald from the county. Hello, everyone. Great. So we'll be covering two topics over our 25 minutes. First, we'll focus on sports and play. I mean, sorry, sports and athletics. And then we'll take a look at the play spaces. And for each topic, we'll share a short presentation that'll include some survey questions that you can participate in. And then we'll have an open Q&A discussion where you can ask questions and share ideas. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Um, <clears throat> And again, uh, you can see, before we start, you can see the Mentimeter here uh, that we're going to use for um, questions or for a few survey questions. And I'm going to put that code in the chat so you can access that. Um, this one's specific to this breakout group. So let me know if you have questions on that front. Um, so. And, and this just gives a little bit more um, information that, that Chris had shared in terms of if you go to the URL, you could put in this code or you could just click on the chat. So um, to start off, just want to share a few design objectives related to the sports and active recreation. Um, one is to, um, one of the goals of the project is to rehabilitate and expand recreational facilities for youth and families. And secondly, it's also important for the park to accommodate simultaneous use by both organized sports teams and drop in play. And as you can see, the park program includes uh, the baseball and softball fields um, in the corner here, a large multi use field. Uh, there's also a plan for a small multi use field. Uh, again, the dimensions are still, um, will be determined in a design and there's some room for um, kind of repositioning. Uh, there's a uh, pump track up here in the corner. Uh, there'll be new tennis courts and pickleball courts, new sand volleyball courts, and a basketball court. So some of the considerations, um, as we move into the design phase will be to balance the organized and informal use, uh, target a range of age groups from toddlers to seniors, and allow for flexibility uh, to accommodate a diversity of sports and activities. And the focus uh, is really on access um, for people of all abilities. And then just a couple of clarifications. Um, as part of the design process, the team will be developing the detailed design for each of these facilities. We'll be considering things such as um, the surface options. Um, for example, for the large multi-use field, uh, we're looking into whether uh, it might make sense to use synthetic turf or natural turf. Uh, for the small multi-use field, that will definitely be natural grass so that it can be used for a range of recre recreational activities and gatherings such as picnics. Um, the fields will not be uh, lighted. Um, and the team will also be evaluating fencing um, or netting for the large field. It could be temporary um, to ensure that it doesn't affect adjacent areas. <clears throat> And finally, um, I just want to mention there's a, uh, we have a specialist in sports and athletic facilities on the team called Pros Consulting, and they will be helping to advise the team on the design and operations of the facilities. Uh, and they'll also be helping to advise on scheduling and the use of the multiple facilities um, relative to uh, the park capacity. So, We'd love to hear from you uh, using uh, that Mentimeter link. We'd love to hear from you which sports or activities would you come to play or your family members um, come to play. Um, so we've included soccer, baseball or softball, lacrosse, tennis or pickleball, basketball, uh, the pump track, volleyball, or other. Um, 
So if you click on there, we'll start to see um, on this slide um, what folks are selecting as some of the types of sports that you or your families um, might start, uh, would come to the park to enjoy. It's <clears throat> the type is very small. Is tennis on there? Uh, yes, um, tennis is here with the pickleball and the yellow. Okay, okay great, thank you. Um, you mentioned softball, but I, uh, Nicholas said that softball was eliminated. Softball, this is Carla, softball is a potential. Um, obviously there's field space to mark and indicate that. I know that some folks were also having trouble with the Menti uh, code and not working necessarily. So if yours is not working for some reason, then please feel free to put it into the chat, um, put your response in there. And um, yeah, we're hoping that we can uh, just honor that you only answer once. So if you already answered on the Menti, then don't put it in the chat. But if you're having trouble with the Menti, um, please put it there so we can uh, capture that as well. Mm -hmm. Do we have a, a chance to ask you questions after we do all the survey things? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I late. I'm sorry. I came in late. Oh, no worries. Welcome. I'm glad you could join us. Um, great. This is wonderful to see lots of interest in tennis and pickleball, as well as um, baseball and pump track. Um, so it's fun to see um, how folks are anticipating using the park uh, from this group. Um, so let's take a few minutes to look at the play areas. Um, <clears throat> uh, the new play areas are, are really one of the most exciting aspects of the park uh, improvements. Um, our goal is that they'll really increase the vibrancy of the park, meet the needs of youth and families by creating these destination play spaces that are welcoming and inclusive for all ages, and foster connections to nature. Uh, the plan currently includes two play areas, the, the central play space here um, and the smaller play space in the southeast corner, which is currently envisioned as a nature play area. Uh, the play spaces are part of a much larger vision um, to create activities for all ages. The play space is located at the center of the park uh, next to the central gathering space here. Um, as well as the administrative building, the amphitheater, and between the two um, multi-use fields. So during the design process, we'll explore the size and configuration of these different play spaces, uh, as along with um, the themes, experience, zones, and types of play. Um, so this is going to be a really fun aspect of the design going forward. And the next few months, we'll be hosting a community event that will focus specifically on the play spaces. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, definitely watch for that event. And the county and design team has also started discussions with the Magical Bridge Foundation to advise on the programming and design of the play spaces to promote play of all ages, abilities, and sizing. So we wanted to get uh, ask you all a few questions related to play spaces, and then we'll open it up to some general discussion. Um, so one thing uh, that's kind of fun is to think about what are some possible theme ideas for the play areas. Um, so again, you can um, go to uh, the Mentimeter in the chat, and um, some of the ideas might be uh, focus on land or forest, the sea, um, maybe uh, local cultural and history or nature. And um, we we'll just toggle back to your, uh, that previous area where you were sharing some ideas. Just put it back in the chat here in case that's an easy way for you to access. Um, but love to hear what are your, what are some possible theme ideas you have for the play spaces? I'm seeing the chat, nature's a great fit, definitely. And one of the, uh, the smaller play spaces definitely intended to be nature play. 
forest and adventure, imagination. Land art. It's great. Mm. Space travel, that's a fun one. Cultural heritage, jungle, creative. Great. Um, we also wanted to uh, hear your thoughts on how you'd rank the importance of different elements. Um, so let's see. So a range of possible elements could include like a small slide, swings, uh, sand. Um, <clears throat> currently there now, some spinning elements, uh, natural elements, rope structures or tunnels. Um, and we're curious, like, how would you rank the importance of these structures in the new play spaces? <clears throat> you know, I've not been able to get this thing to work for me, so I don't know how to submit anything. Oh, feel free to just put it in the chat. That's okay. totally fine. Well, we're capturing all the notes from the chat, so. Okay. Yeah, we'll be, sh yeah. like a lot of uh, kind of larger physical play with natural features, rope structures, accessible swings. That's great. And um, great. And then we'll take a look at some other elements, um, like a big slide, a tower, a bridge, Climbable features, um, swinging elements, uh, flexible sculpture that can actually be double as a play space or these sort of uh, tensile structures that are connecting different features. Uh, curious to get your input on some of these. <clears throat> And as Chris mentioned, we're gonna we're gonna hold a kind of a workshop event that's just spoke, focused um, on play spaces. So if this is a area of interest to you or your family, um, keep an eye out for that event, and we'll be able to get into a little more detail about um, the different features that could be included and how they could be arranged. Great. Climbing features, a big slide, a bridge. Um, that's fun. Uh, so again, I think kind of focusing on a lot of that larger physical activity. Um, it's very exciting. Um, All righty. I think that is, um, I guess the last question we wanted to ask is just what else is important in the playground? Um, is it benches and seating, uh, tables? Uh, shade, uh, is it art and murals or the, you know, kind of varied topography or plants and nature? I think this is our last question on the play spaces. Mm. I know as a mom, I'm always very interested in benches and shade. <laughs>
And thanks for those that are sharing some through the chat, uh, more tables, um, benches and seating, plants and nature. Before we end the session, will you recap these? Will we see these pictures again or? Uh, I will, we, we can post these on the county website. Um, we're gonna recap them when we get back to the main room, uh, more I think verbally, um, but uh, I believe we'll be posting these on the county website as well at some point. So we'll, um, to that point, we will um, do a wrap up of the meeting, the meeting recording, as well as, you know, um, sort of a debrief on the breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carla. Okay. I had a question. Um, I, I recall there being bocce ball courts in some of the planning initially. Are they, I mean, when I came to play in sports, I was expecting to hear about them, but I'm not, I didn't see anything regarding that in the, Uh, Carla or Christina, is that something you want to speak to? I can speak to it. Um, <clears throat> um, if, you, if you're familiar with the park, early on, or <clears throat> uh, original or really common established practice was petanque, which is a form of bocce. <clears throat> As we went through the process, um, beginning in February through 2016, there was a suggestion of adding bocce. And then as we started going through really sort of similar to this ranking process uh, that we're doing now, um, uh, bocce didn't essentially make the cut. There weren't a lot of uh, votes for that um, compared to some other things. But one of the things you all might also think about while this doesn't serve the purpose of bocce or patonk, um, having those open fields really um, allows for some open play, whether that be frisbee or something like that. So um, uh, it's it's you know a different way to think about um, some use of the some sort of unplanned, unscheduled use of the area. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, through the process, bocce and petanque were eliminated. Well, can thank, you. Thank, thank you, Carla. Oh, thank you for that. I, oh, I appreciate knowing. Can oh. you be if, so if folks could just raise their hands so we, we're not speaking over each other, um, I think we have time for just a couple more questions. Can they be added, uh, Bachi? Can it be can reconsidered? Because this is a different group than what you had before meeting. Well, so I think uh, <clears throat> as we went through the process early on, and we outlined the history and the engagement. And then what's really important um, is the... EIR process, which looked at uh, the uses and evaluated um, number of people and so forth. So we can't add um, a new feature because that mm -hmm. wasn't in the their environmental review document. So um, but I think why are we here then? Oh, well, I'm sorry. I just feedback. oh, Carla, I just wanted to note. There's. I just want to make sure other folks, there's. Judah and then Julie, and we just have a like one minute left. So I just want to make sure folks can get their, their question asked. And I just want to, if I can just say, you know, this is the beginning of the process. We're going to have several meetings and several opportunities and we'll work through and refine these things. So this is the very beginning. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's why I'm asking, if mm -hmm. this is the very beginning, can't we add other things mm -hmm. that we've come up with? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, unfortunately, we can't because of that. That was the plan that was approved through the environmental review process. Uh, Judah, did you want to answer a yeah. question? I just want to say very quickly that um, I, I understand uh, I'm disappointed that the bocce isn't there, but I understand, and that's okay. If the community did not uh, rise to that occasion and, and there wasn't enough people to support it, I'm fine with that. Thank you. Okay, Thanks, and Julie, I think, had a hand raised. Yes, hi. Thank you so much for prioritizing the sports fields as phase one. Um, I live on a block. We've got no less than 26 kids. They're super excited to use all of that space in a number of different ways. 
Um, is there a reason why there won't be lighting in the sports fields? Um, will the park continue to close at sunset or will they be extended for gameplay? So, uh, Miranda, if you want me to take that, um, the park will close at sunset just as it does now. And lighting was one of those elements that uh, were not factored in, into the environmental review. So we, we, we wouldn't be able to add that. Great, it looks like Pierre also had his hand up and then Michael, I see you're physically raising your hand, which also works. Yeah, I just, uh, I just posted to the chat, but basically I'm advocating for uh, permanent pickleball courts as opposed to shared with tennis because that makes it more enjoyable because uh, then you have permanent nets and not the temporary nets. Great, thank you. Um, and then Michael, and then I see Naomi also has her hand up. Okay, so I'm really glad to see field sports at Flood Park like soccer. I think that's terrific. However, the place that you have allocated for it right now is a really bad choice because it cuts down the central heart of the woodland and there are options that the community has mapped out and suggested and I would really like to see the field shifted to one of those optional places. One of them is below the baseball field between the baseball field and the adobe office building and the other one is out near the entrance to the park in the open area that is adjacent to the oak shelter and people should learn more about this and insist that the woodlands remain intact. Um, I, I would like to uh, second that, but I'd also like to say I, I'm a 25-year soccer fanatic. I love soccer, and I agree that there we have a dire need for more soccer fields, but it's just not an appropriate place to put it in the middle of that woodland because, you know, you're going to have soccer balls flying off the field, hitting people who are picnicking nearby. You know, the noise, the shouting, the, the whistles is going to be disturbing to other uses in the park. Consolidate the athletic fields in one area north, um, which is a much more appropriate place to have them. Thank you. Okay, great. And I think we're going to get called back to the main room and everyone will have a, a chance to um, join a second uh, breakout room and topic area. Um, I'm not getting the call back yet, so I think we might be able to take um, one more question or comment. Okay, great. So I, I, I just wanted to um, say too, I think that this park is sort of evenly divided between nature and the sports fields uh, to the Northeast. And it's just a natural division. And uh, it does make sense to keep really advocate for the nature of the woodland and keep that and keep the noise down and keep the, the uh, animals and the wildlife that's there protected and have all the sports in the sports area. That just seems mm -hmm. such an easy division. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so it looks like in just uh, 20 seconds we'll be um, put back in the main room and then you all will have a choice to choose between urban forest or the historic resources and picnic areas for the next discussion. So thanks uh, so really, much everyone. And really quick question. Do we know if the sports fields are going to be turf or grass? Uh, the, the smaller one will be grass and the larger one Hello all, welcome to the Sports and Play breakout room and discussion. Um, I have added the recording here. And um, so this session, we're gonna look at two topics. The first is the sports and athletic fields. And the second is the play uh, spaces. Um, and just to introduce myself, I'm Miranda Maupin with SKIO Solutions, and I also have Lauren Johnson from SKIO that's taking notes for us in our session here. And we're also joined by uh, Carla Schoof from San Mateo County. And uh, do we have Nicholas or? Uh, you get well? me. You get me this session. Wonderful. Welcome, Nicholas. Um, Thank you. So for each topic, we'll be providing a short presentation um, that includes a couple of polling questions for you all to participate in. And then we'll have an open Q&A at the end where you can ask questions and 
share ideas um, that you'd like us to consider. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, <clears throat> And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we'll be using um, the Mentimeter again, just to gather a few thoughts around some specific questions we have around the design. Um, so uh, for sports and active recreation, um, I wanna start by just outlining a few of the objectives for, for these areas. One of the key goals of the project is to rehabilitate and expand recreational facilities for youth and families. Uh, it's also important for the park to accommodate simultaneous play by organized sports teams and drop-in play. Uh, so as you can see, um, the, let's see here, the, some of the sports spaces include this uh, baseball softball field in the upper left, as well as a large multi-use field that's overlaying uh, the baseball field. Um, there's also uh, a small multi-use field. And again, the dimensions and sort of the exact um, con configuration here is something we'll be looking at. Um, there's also a pump track planned for the upper right here. Uh, there'll be new tennis and pickleball courts, as well as new sand volleyball courts and a basketball court over here. So some of the design considerations um, that we'll be um, thinking about as, as we uh, get into more detailed design is how to balance the more organized and the informal use of the park. We wanna make sure we're targeting a range of age groups from toddlers to seniors. And it's important to allow for flexibility um, so we can accommodate a diversity of sports and activities and focus on active access and inclusivity for people of all ages. And then just a couple clarifications. Um, so these are the different um, sports and athletic places that um, have been approved and planned for the design. Um, so going forward, we'll be developing a detailed design for each of these facilities. So for example, we'll be considering the, the field surface options for example, whether to use turf, uh, synthetic turf or natural turf for this large multi-field. Um, we will be using natural turf for the small multi-use fields so that it can blend in to the surrounding areas and have a more flexible uh, use. Uh, the fields in these other facilities will not include lighting at night. Um, the team will be evaluating fencing or netting around this large multi-use field, it could be temporary, but the idea is to make sure that um, it doesn't affect adjacent park uses. And then finally, um, we just wanted to share that uh, our team does include a specialist in the sports and athletic facilities called Pros Consulting, and they'll be advising the team on the design and operations of the facilities, including how uh, to schedule the, the scheduling, of the multi-use facilities that is consistent with the capacity of the park. So we wanted to gather your input on a couple questions. Um, and in particular, we're interested in which sorts or activities would you come to play or maybe your family? Um, so soccer, baseball, softball, lacrosse, uh, tennis or pickleball, basketball, uh, the new pump truck, I think this is the first in the county, uh, volleyball or, or other. And so this is where we're hoping you can use uh, the Mentimeter to just share your thoughts. Um, I'm gonna put the link in the chat um, for this group in particular. This is specific to this breakout group. And you can see these are some of the some of the input from the first breakout group. So we're hoping you'll add to this and just share which of these sports or activities are you looking forward to come and play, uh, either you personally or your family. You know, it looks like with this group, there's a lot of interest in the tennis and pickleball, um, and then just a lot of interest across the board with the new pump track. Um, soccer, baseball, volleyball. 
Great. Um, and then, um, if your folks have had a chance to share some thoughts. Um, next, we wanted to take a, a few minutes to go over the play spaces. Um, so the new play areas are really, they're one of the most exciting aspects of the proposed park improvements. And the goal is to really increase the vibrancy of the park and meet the needs of the youth and families uh, through some expanded uses. Uh, our hope is to create uh, a destination play spaces um, that include all abilities play and also foster connections to nature. So the plan currently includes two play areas um, the, the central play space here, and then a smaller play space um, in the southeast corner of the park, which is currently envisioned as a nature play space. So the hope is that the play spaces will be part of a much broader vision to create activities for all ages and really think about some of these adjacencies um, with the other uses. Um, so families can enjoy the park with, uh, you know, multiple ages. So during the design process, we'll be exploring um, the size and configuration of these spaces, um, along with um, the theme, what kind of experiences could be explored, what kind of zones and types of play. And in the next few months, we'll be hosting a community event to focus specifically on the design of the play spaces, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely keep an eye out for that event. And finally, I wanted to share that the county and the design team have started discussions with the Magical Bridge Foundation uh, and to advise on the programming and design of the play spaces to promote play of all ages, abilities, and sizes. Um, so we had a couple of questions uh, for you all on the play spaces. The first is, is what your thoughts are about possible theme ideas for the play area. So it could be like a forest theme or a sea theme. Uh, it could focus on local cultural and history um, or nature. And so uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. And again, if you want to um, add your thoughts about potential themes, feel free to um, go back to the Mentimeter link and you can see there were ideas um, shared by the previous groups. So we can just add to those, but there's a lot about trees, um, nature and forests, as well as um, fun ideas like space, um, space travel, culture, cultural heritage. Great, and then uh, we'd also be interested in your thoughts about, um, Michael, thanks for sharing your, your idea in the chat. Feel free to use the chat if Mentimeter is not working for you or, um, and we be assured we'll be collecting all the thoughts in the chat as well. Um, so for play areas, we're curious, you know, how you would rank these different uh, potential elements, uh, small slides, swings, uh, sand play area, spinning elements, uh, natural elements like logs. Someone, someone mentioned that, uh, I think, on the, the last slide with the themes, climbing on logs, rope structures, or tunnels. And this just gives kind of a real time ranking of where folks in this group and the last, what they're thinking would be fun for kids and families. We'll give folks a few minutes to um, just add their thoughts to these elements. And then we have a second set of elements as well. Um, this includes like a big slide, uh, possibly connected with a tower, um, bridges, climbable features, uh, swinging elements, 
or flexible sculpture, sculpture where kids can actually climb, climb the sculpture, um, or tensile structures, which are like this connective netting. So again, I would love to hear your thoughts on which of these elements you think will be most fun for families in Flood Park. And there seemed to be kind of an interest in these larger climbing structures, the bridge, large slide. So feel free to add, um, add your thoughts. Um, and I think we have one more question here. Um, give folks another second to just share their thoughts. We know it takes a minute to kind of go through and select, select your rankings. Okay. And then the last question we had is what else is important for the playground? Um, benches and seating or tables, um, art murals, uh, hills or topography, shade, um, or plants in nature. Uh, I know I mentioned this in the last group. As a mom, the the bench, the benches and shade were really have always been important to me as a mom. But curious to hear what you all think in terms of what else uh, would be helpful to include in the play spaces. And you can see others, others also agreed with the benches and shade, but um, also interested in plants and nature, natural shade. Thanks, Michael. Great. Okay, and I think we have a few minutes left. Um, saved a few minutes um, for some discussion. Um, so at this point, um, just open it up for discussion. If folks could raise their hand, um, I think that'll help since we have about 17 folks. Um, I'm gonna stop screen sharing here. Yeah, any, any questions about the sports? and athletic facilities or the play spaces? Yeah, Michael. Uh, hi, you know, I'd, I'd like to welcome uh, field sports and soccer to Flood Park. However, the place that's called for uh, putting it in the 2020 plan is, uh, is really wrong. It's in the middle of the woodland, which is uh, a time-honored and valuable part of the park. And I would like to suggest that it get placed at one of the alternative locations that have been mapped out by the community. Thanks, Michael. Any other, um, any other questions or ideas folks wanna share? Miranda, I could actually respond to one of the questions that was in the chat earlier, I think from Evelyn about um, the use of which type of fields we're going to have. Um, right now, there's a lot of factors that are going into it. So I appreciate your, your comment and concern about water use in particular, um, the cost of it, especially. Um, we're looking at a number of factors, including um, maintenance of the site. Um, as you may know, the SFPUC actually owns a swath of land that goes right through the middle of the baseball field. And so having maintenance of that particular site um, is definitely a factor we're considering as well. We're looking at ways that we can reuse water on the site. Um, we're definitely not just making a decision just um, with, with a single lens on this, that we have a lot of different factors we're considering. So um, thank you for your comment on that. Thank you. Thank you for answering. Yeah, and I'm getting a notice that we're going to get called back to the main room. So I want to give everyone a little warning. Um, but we might have time for one more question. It looks like uh, here, yeah, have your hand raised. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, I take my grandchildren to Mitchell Park. And the reason is uh, somebody wrote to uh, St. Tech. So meaning that it's kind of a fun, but very unusual kind of uh, playground. So I, I was wondering if you could add into 
integrate with nature, of course, but something more techy and kind of advanced, uh, modern and mm -hmm. edgy, some kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fun. Thanks. Thank and, you for that uh, suggestion. Yeah, and a bicycle. I, I I believe we can keep the bicycle there around mm -hmm. the, the whole park. I believe. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know. Having some fun stuff for bikes as well. Definitely, definitely. I think um, in addition to the pump track, I think that there's um, the design is looking at the circulation throughout the park and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I've seen in other countries as well, some kind of signs so the kids can learn like, a, you know, a traffic light or something that they start to learn to develop in a safe place, which means in a park instead of on the street. So, mm -hmm. so they can pretend to be on a city, you know, type. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I think to simulate that would be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Ron, looks like you have your hand up. And just a warning, we might get called back to the main room, but I want to take advantage of the time to hear as many questions as we can or suggestions. Go ahead, Ron. Okay. Uh, I want to put my two cents in for pickleball. Uh, this, this meeting didn't get a lot of publicity within the pickleball community, but there are hundreds of people that are interested in pickleball at Flood Park. And uh, it would be great if one of the two tennis courts could be made into a into four because because that's how many pickleball courts fit on one tennis court four uh could be made into four permanent pickleball courts with permanent nets uh so th they don't need to be shared with tennis uh the idea is that if you have pickleball courts it will create a drop-in culture people will will show up without pre-arranging games they will just show up as they do at mitchell park in palo alto which is right adjacent to the magical bridge playground if you ever go out there on a 10 o'clock on a weekday, you will see 50 people playing pickleball. <laughs> and they, they don't show up with prearranged games, they just show up. Mm -hmm. and, and all ages, from 10 to 90. I would like to, I, I can't figure out how to raise my hand, but I would just like to ask, um, add to what Ron said. I played pickleball for the first time over the holiday break. And it's really fun. It's not as, it's not as uh, doesn't wear you out like tennis does. And any age can play. So it'd be nice to have some permanent pickleball courts too. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Um, okay, I think I think we need to get. Uh, yeah, I think we're getting called back to the main room. Um, so thank you so much for everybody um, for joining and sharing your thoughts on the polls as well as um, your discussion in the chat and um, verbally. So we're gonna go back to the main room, do a quick. Um, sharing out of what we uh, heard in each of the breakout groups. And as I mentioned, um, we'll also be collecting all of the chat. Um, so any comments that you shared there, we'll, we'll definitely um, keep those in mind as well. So um, we will see you all back in the main room.